CW and Jeannie, thank you for staying with us. And I also have uh, Benedict Nolan online with us. Hello, Benedict. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Terrific. Well, we have uh, 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 an online participant who has a special question for you. Uh, he okay. would like you, it's Matthew, and Matthew would like you to uh, uh, say a little bit more about blockchain and how it can help the operation of uh, green finance. Okay, so thank you, Matthew, for the question. So this is obviously a very, very new uh, area and still still developing, you could say. But um, already what exists today is the ability to track, as you know, the outputs of, for example, wind farms or solar farms, and that can be tracked with a meter. And this meter can be connected to blockchain so that you see the, the outputs really real time and these outputs then become tradable. So this link links into carbon offsets and carbon trading. So it's a very nascent area, but it's, uh, it's definitely a good method for tracking these outputs and for making them more tradable in the future. Benedict, thank you so much. I mean, obviously technology and uh, decarbonization, uh, the whole sustainability field is so exciting. Now, I just want to perhaps open up the discussion uh, to uh, CW and to Jeannie. We, we, we have a colloquial saying in Cantonese in Hong Kong, no money, no talk. So obviously the, the massive transformation that we have to do on sustainability and on decarbonization, you know, on the subject of no money, no talk, I wonder if you can give us your perspective. Well, uh, of course, I think well, money is very important well, uh, to promote a green and sustainable well, development. Yeah. And Hong Kong is a financial hub. Yeah. And just for May this year, uh, we established a, a, a cross-agency group uh, to promote the green and sustainable finance well, for this city. Uh, is it because well, in Hong Kong, well, I think the finance matters are regulated by well, several different agencies. And therefore, well, that group pull together all the relevant agencies well, in order to work on this very important subject. Yeah. Right, right. Jeannie? Well, I think when we think about sustainability, the point about sustainability is that uh, the financial or economic sustainability of any uh, country, city, or operation is critical. The question is how to balance the environmental and the social impacts that, that come with it. And in this case, you know, if we really want to improve the environment, we really do need to channel or rechannel some of this investment into that area. And you know, there is a lot of money out there. People say, oh, there's tons of money out there, but it's not going into the environmental solutions that we really need. And so you know, it's great to see the opportunity for having a green financing tools, um, mechanisms to help attract and redirect some of this investment funding that is available to actually help to build some of these solutions that we really need. Right. Well, perhaps we can give uh, Benedict the last word. I mean, obviously what we're saying is how can Hong Kong as uh, uh, the international finance hub for China, I mean, how can we help China as a whole to make this tremendous transit to decarbonize? Yes, yeah, so it really links up with all these aspects of green finance that uh, that were mentioned, including by Majun. So it links up to with equity fundraising, so stock exchange, for example, uh, and ESG disclosure. Uh, the ESG disclosure standards have been uh, significantly improved over, over the last already six years. So that's been an ongoing improvement. And I think it is most critical to, to, to continue to, uh, improvement in, in the standards. Uh, furthermore, as, as mentioned, green bonds, uh, Hong Kong is playing and can continue to play a large role in that to help on the, on the capital raise with international investors. Um, and furthermore, on lending, our banks can increasingly apply higher standards to, to, to their lending practices and the extension of credit, essentially, to, to not extend that to highly polluting industries um, and instead are 
help them in their transition, help fund their transition through these uh, green lending. So I think these are critically important. Uh, carbon trading, of course, is out there as well, as several speakers have mentioned. I think it's uh, it's still an area that, that is waiting for possibly even, as, as I mentioned at the start, more technology. Uh, in order to make it uh, fully transparent and and to to bring it really to to international uh, levels. Well, thank you. Well, what I uh, suggest is uh, we have one last uh, presentation, and this by my co-chair Jeannie Ng. And what is really important is as we go forward on the sustainability and the decarbonization journey, we need to train a massive number of talents. Particularly, we need to get people to have the professional uh, background and understanding and qualifications to help all of us to go forward. So I will end here, but please stay on and watch Jeannie's presentation. And afterwards, don't forget to come back at two o'clock this afternoon for the next session. Thank you very much. And thank you, Jeannie, and thank you, CW. Thank you.